Hello everyone and uh, welcome to this uh, how to painting guide video where we're going to be painting a French uh, infantry corporal uh, from our French uh, line infantry set. Um, now before I start uh, I've just been coating this uh, miniature in uh, some black ink to uh, pick up some of the details to show you guys what we're going to be painting today. Um, Obviously, one of the really significant things about the French infantry of the Franco-Prussian War was the tent poles that were carried on the backpack, the rolled up tent and uh, uh, the signal uh, uh, red cabbie, red trousers and uh, the white gaiters, um, really significant stuff that tells you that we are in the Franco-Prussian era. So. Obviously, uh, besides the really particular deep blue color of the French um, infantry greatcoat, we're going to be focusing on getting all of these details right uh, to create a miniature that will look decisively like a Franco-Prussian French uh, infantryman. So um, I'm going to be base coating him in black. Um, there's um, some, some different takes on that. Uh, you could always use a, a light gray also, but I like black since it uh, helps us define some of the smaller details later on. For instance, buttons or uh, smaller metal parts on the, on the rifle and so on. We're gonna be doing a lot of small details like uh, the buttons and the gaiters and so on. So uh, black is, uh, is my option here. Um, but it does uh, create the need to sometime do a, an extra coat of paint on top to really, for instance, on lighter colors like uh, grays or reds, you will need uh, two base coats of, of a, a red color, for instance, to really cover up the black. So um, without any further, uh, I'm gonna be uh, base coating him now in black and then we'll move on from there. All right, so base coating is uh, no greater science. It's just a question of having, a, 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 in this case, black paint that's not too thick, and then to really uh, give yourself time to work uh, your way into all those small uh, corners and creases of the miniature to make sure that you have uh, covered everything in black. So I'm just gonna be working over the miniature with a rather mid-sized brush here and just making sure that everything is uh, is covered in a uh, even and smooth um, black paint coat. So <clears throat> I'll finish that up and we'll pick up from there. Okay, so we've got a um, smooth and even black undercoat to work on and uh, we're gonna jump on over to the initial step um, and something which is gonna uh, give our miniature a lot of uh, character and um, personality, namely the skin colors. So we're gonna paint up the face and hands. I'm gonna do that by using um, our skin uh, color triad, um, which is a hand-picked uh, triad uh, that uh, we're offering on our web shop in collaboration with the Green Stuff World. Now, the great thing about Green Stuff World Colors, um, besides the, I think you all know uh, this application lid is really nice and easy to control when you are applying the color to your wet palette, for instance. It also helps the color not to get exposed to too much air and dry out. So besides having this application lid, it also has a metal ball inside the paint pot. So when you shake it, it sounds like that and it helps to mix up the paint and really give you a nice smooth and uh, lean color to work with. Uh, something that I really uh, uh, fell in love with, with these colors and um, that's why I started this uh, collaboration. So we're offering a lot of uh, Green Stuff uh, World colors now on uh, the Eagles of Empire web shop. You'll find different color triads uh, depending on which miniature you uh, want to paint. We have for um, the French infantry that we're going to paint today, we have of course the skin colors. We have a, a French uh, great, color, uh, great coat blue. Uh, we have also the reds for the uh, kepi and the trousers. We have some uh, uh, 
They handpicked uh, tan colors for the gaiters and a rolled up tin. And of course we have some more uh, creamy beige colors for the bread pouch. Uh, all of them uh, really important uh, to really hit the mark uh, for um, uh, the look and feel of the Franco-Prussian uh, French uh, uniform. So um, yeah, let's start out by the, the skin. Uh, try it here. We're gonna have a dark uh, base color. We're gonna have a lighter mid-tone and we're gonna have a light uh, highlight. All right, guys, so um, we've applied the um, darkest base coat of the skin triad. Uh, we have a really, uh, see, a really nice and even result. We're now gonna pick up some of the details by adding uh, an ink wash uh, to this layer. Uh, I'm uh, going to go with a dark brown ink, which I think uh, really helps define um, the skin. So um, I'm gonna thin it up a little bit with some water, but uh, we're mainly looking to pick up some of the details around the nose and eyes and between the fingers and the wrists coming into the sleeves of the great coat. So uh, let's get working on that straight away. All right, so um, uh, this dark brown ink is available also uh, as one of our colors. Uh, I think it's part of an ink triad that's available on the web store. Uh, so you can pick it up there also if you want. It's really good for uh, skins, but also good for horse flesh or uh, rifles. Right, so I'm gonna um, just thin out the ink a little bit with water. Give us a nice smooth ink to work with. And we're going to aim this at all the little details around the fingers the nose and eyes. Right. So I'm gonna let that dry up for a second and we'll move on to the uh, mid-tone of the skin triad. Okay, so we're now going to be doing the mid-tone for a skin color. Uh, applying it to the web palette, it's really easy to control the viscosity of the paint. You can add a, always add a little water if you think you are having a too thick a quality. So um, yeah, again, we're working with a really fine brush here. Uh, just to make sure we pick up all the details really accurately. Uh, what we're going to be focusing on with the um, the mid-tone is uh, the larger areas of the of the face, like uh, uh, the chin, but also going into some of the smaller areas. We have also. making sure that the paint is nice and thin and of course uh, the hand now I always start out by painting the knuckles because that gives me something to navigate after and I kind of go in with some light brush strokes here just to define the hand and the finger I try to go in with two kind of dots to define the outer and inner uh, joints of the of the finger. So um, building it up slowly, slowly, going in for some detail here on the eyes.
is carefully building up taking my time I mean the face is always something that's gonna have a lot of attention it's kind of a central point in the miniature so we want to get all the little details right here right so I'm gonna finish up the second hand also and um, we're gonna move on to creating uh, some uh, highlights using the highlight skin color. All right, so um, mid-tone skin color been applied, adding a lot of uh, expression now to the face. Um, we're gonna round up the face by adding highlights using the third color in the flesh triad. <clears throat> and then finally, um, I think I'm gonna just gently go in and see if I can apply some um, a light pink to the underlip, just to kind of uh, pick that up in the his his beard. You'll get a a, a good little detail there. And um, yeah, I think that's it. I'm uh, pretty happy so far. So uh, let's move on with applying some uh, highlight of the flesh triad. All right, so. Um, Using the highlight of the flesh triad, I'm gonna focus on the tip of the nose, the knuckles, obviously going in here on the cheekbone, uh, picking up some of those details in the face, maybe even see if we can hit the eyelid, eyebrows here. Just gently, gently. It's really, it's a lot of detailed work here to start with, but um, it's also really important again to um, to get the face right because there is so much of the miniatures uh, personality and character lies in the in the face now um, if you hadn't had a, a, a full beard what you could do also is you could create a a, a, a stop tone on the skin on the cheeks uh, maybe I'll do that later on in another uh, miniature uh, that doesn't have a, a full beard we can uh, work on creating some extra expression there in the face uh, just taking a, a maybe the mid-tone of the skin color, blending in some gray and getting a, a gray skin color you can apply to, to have that uh, uh, beard stop look. Um, right, so on with, the, on with the highlights here. Just picking up the tip of the fingers here. Gently, gently going in. And kind of imagining where um, the sun would have hit, creating that highlight. Right. So I think I'm uh, pretty happy so far. Um, I'm gonna move on now to uh, adding some uh, detail by giving him a slightly pink tone on the underlip to pick up that detail also uh, in contrast to the really big French full beard this guy's got. So we're moving on to that. All right, so that completes the skin uh, triad. Now also I've added a little, little hint of pink in uh, on the other upper uh, underlip just to uh, get some contrast uh, to that uh, really big uh, full beard he's got. So I'm uh, pretty happy with the overall results. So we'll move on uh, to the next step of the miniature, which is um, the great uh, coat blue. Now um, we've got a particular triad for that color, uh, consisting of a really dark purplish uh, blue. They'll give you that really, really uh, deep, um, uh, imperial blue of the French uniform. We've got a highlight color for that. And I don't know if, if you guys have ever Googled uh, uh, a French uniform of the period and seen an actual um, replica or uh, original, but they're really deep blue. Um, so what we're gonna do after painting um, these uh, two blue colors is that we're gonna apply a 
um, extra layer of black ink to really get that deep uh, French uh, uniform blue. Now, I've been to uh, some of the museums in France, uh, really studying the, the French uniforms in detail, leading up to the, the launch of Eagles of Empire. And I can tell you that the French uh, uniform blue is, is, is almost a blackish blue. It's really, really deep and getting withered and worn out uh, through the campaign. It, uh, the highlights are very close to a dusty purplish blue. So uh, I really took out a lot of time to find these colors to really make sure that uh, we hit the mark on the, on the French uniform blue. So um, let's get started. I'll show you the result. We'll start out by applying um, the, the uh, base color blue, the really deep blue, and it will just get a smooth uh, finish on the whole gray coat, uh, not taking too much, uh, uh, not being too fussy about details. I mean, if we hit any of the shoulder straps or anything, we can always repair that uh, going forward. So don't, uh, don't be too stressed out about that. Just uh, go for a nice uh, smooth finish of uh, blue. So let's get started. Okay, so we're going to uh, be applying um, this really deep purplish blue. Again, don't worry too much about maybe hitting one or two leather wear details or shoulder straps or anything. We can always repair that later as we go forward. So focusing just on having a nice smooth uh, paint to work with and applying an even layer to this to the gray coat so yeah i'm just working my way around you see i'm not too fussy about what i'm actually hitting or not hitting just making sure that we get into all the, the corners and creases here so um i'll finish up coating the blue and uh, I'll catch you guys there. We've applied a nice and even uh, dark blue uh, base coat for the blue triad and um, we're gonna move forward now with uh, some highlights on the on the fabric. For that we're going to go with the uh, dusty uh, blue mid color now it's going to look very, uh, I mean, significantly more light compared to uh, the dark blue. But don't forget, we're going to tone everything down later on by the black ink to really get that uh, field worn French uh, dark blue uniform. So don't worry too much uh, about jumping into this. We need something that really creates a lot of contrast since we're going to use the black ink as a final step. So um, again, I've been really careful at choosing these colors since I really want to uh, create the right look and feel uh, to represent the Franco-Prussian War. So um, yeah, let's uh, jump into this and I'll show you what, how it's going to look. So we're going to work on some of the highlights here on the great coat. Just working some of the edges is bound to pick up some of the sunlight. And um, it does look very, very light when you see it like this but it's gonna be nicely toned down when we apply the black ink. So again, don't worry about it. Just uh, steam forward and uh, kind of visualize where the, the sun would have hit the fabric here and uh, again, uh, the sculptor Ebop has done some, uh, wonderful work on creating a, um, a miniature that is both detailed and a, a really really easy and a real joy to paint so uh, a little shout out to him um, a 
applying uh, this highlight uh, is it's not really that demanding you 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 get a lot of the details uh, given in the in uh, in the depth of uh, of the actual sculpting so just follow the the gray coat round and uh, especially here on the on the sleeves there's a lot of creases and folds in the fabric that's that would pick up some highlights so yeah just uh, kind of feel your way around uh, also here on the edge of the collar, some highlighting. Um, right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna finish up the highlights now. Uh, I think you have a good, pretty good picture of how that works. Um, and then after that, we're gonna jump over to the final step of the gray coat, which is uh, the black ink, which is gonna really tone everything down to create that feel-worn, weathered-out uh, French uniform. Okay guys, let me show you what we got so far. Um, we've now created uh, the base coat for the uh, blue gray coat and we have uh, added some highlights to it. And it's now time to really deepen down that color. I mean, you can see it's pretty, it's pretty light blue, but we've managed to pick up all the um, highlights, creases and uh, light points in the uniform here so we're gonna just uh, just deepen the, the blue tone we do that by applying a black ink um, which is part of um, the French blue uh, uniform triad so it's a really intense uh, black ink from uh, Green Stuff World that we're gonna apply and it's gonna deepen down the uniform significantly giving us a look and feel that's gonna take us from what you see on your left to what you see on your right. So it's a pretty big step, really important step. And uh, like I said before, uh, don't get uh, nervous that it looks really light because we need a, a big a contrast here because we're gonna really tone it down with the ink. So um, let's move forward and uh, apply the ink. Uh, I'm not going to thin it out with water, uh, rather I'm going to apply it uh, straight out of the bottle uh, and uh, just let it work uh, to, uh, to tone down the color. Yeah, so I just wanted to show you I'm just in the middle of applying the black ink and I'm just you know, really pouring it on quite liberally. Don't get too concerned about not hitting or hitting outside the uniform. I mean, all, all we need to take care of here is really the the skin color we we did earlier. So just apply pretty liberally, and it will dry up and give us that really nice weathered uh, uniform feeling. Right. Okay. I'm gonna let him dry up a little bit, and then we'll start to work on the next step, which is the red of the kepi and the trousers. Alright guys, so uh, we're painting a French light infantry uh, soldier, or rather officer here, I think this guy's a corporal. Um, we have uh, painted the skin uh, triad so far, uh, and we've painted the French grey coat blue triad as well. The ink of the French uh, grey coat blue is actually just drying up right now, but uh, I'm going to jump on over to adding um the red the base coat of the red so like much uh, uh, of the other things we're going to do today we we do have a specific triad for the red consists of a uh, dark red base coat a um, highlight i think uh, i think this is like a fiery red highlight and we have a dark uh, red ink which will really help us define uh, decreases of uh, the fabric in the in the red trousers. So let's start out by um, adding uh, the red base coat. We'll move on from there to the ink um, and um, we'll add some highlights finally. But I think he's uh, 
starting to look, uh, starting to come alive. This uh, uh, French uh, line infantry man, right? So for this um, base coat, I'm using a medium-sized brush. Uh, And uh, I think I mentioned this earlier, but when you're painting uh, on top of a black undercoat, some colors might require two base coats. And I think red is a really good example because you want to really create that fiery, vibrant red uh, of the French uniform in 1870. So I'm going to suggest here that we do a double base coat uh, of the of the red um, so I'm just gonna trace around here uh, the pants and move on up to uh, the epaulette they're called those uh, shoulder uh, garments of the French uniform uh, of the Empire and uh, finally we're gonna do the the cappy here uh, so those three steps I'm gonna do now and uh, I'll catch up with you when those are done all right, guys, let me show you what we got so far. Um, red undercoat is now done. Uh, two layers of uh, red has been applied just to help uh, the color become more vibrant and clear on the black undercoat. And it's now time to jump on over to the next step of the red triad, which is uh, red ink wash. This is uh, a great way to um, create some depth and to define some of the details in the uh, in the French uh, red uh, breeches here. Uh, there's some really uh, nicely sculpted uh, creases and uh, wavery details here in the fabric. So we're gonna pick up some of those using uh, the red ink wash. And also we're gonna help uh, define some of the fringes in the epaulettes on the shoulders by this. And it's gonna create some depth overall and detail in the miniature. So. Um, I'm just going to apply the ink straight out of the bottle, uh, not thinning it up because I want to create a really dark contrast to work on since uh, the next step is going to be applying a mix uh, of um, the base color and the highlight. So we create an, an in-between um, between those two outer points. So yeah, on we go with uh, the ink. Okay, so I've applied the red ink. Uh, as you can see, pretty, yeah, pretty liberally on the on the on the breeches there, just to make sure that we will get that dark tone in the, the creases and folds in the fabric. Um, right. So the next step, uh, while this uh, ink dries up, is to mix a uh, crossover between the base color and the highlight, so we get a kind of mid tone. Um, Real easy. I think we're going to go for a 50-50 a mix. So uh, no rocket science, just uh, mixing those two colors and it will give us something to uh, work with now as we are going to define some of the areas where the fabric uh, kind of pops out and uh, giving a nice uh, three-dimensional feel to the, the overall finish. So that's what we're going to do now. All right, so we're going to crossover color mixed here and I'm just gonna focus on some of the areas where the fabric pops out those are really nicely defined in the sculpting so it will help you a lot when doing this now this is one of the steps where you really want to just take your time don't rush it just I'm, I'm using a pretty small brush here also just to make sure that I can build it up step by step not rushing it just building up layer by layer I kind of you know the paint is pretty thinned out not you know watery but it's it's thinned out uh, and I can build up just slowly slowly build up the contrast uh, and it's gonna create a really nice uh, overall finish so I'm gonna work my way around the legs here just uh, taking my time to really see where the details and the fabric are picking my targets as I go along not rushing it but 
you know, just giving it the time and the attention, making sure that I'm not smudging too much paint on, but rather giving it time also to dry out and to come back and revisit certain areas to give them even further pigment. So this is, uh, let me just give you some background here. This is a good example of uh, uh, the mid-tone color. Uh, this is a really nice uh, point for us to then apply the highlight as a final step where we're going to look at some of the places where the fabric really pops out like here in the knee and here in the on the edge to the gaiters and uh, maybe the the, uh, the top of the the kepi. those are the areas where we want to create a, a final highlight so but let me just finish off the mid tone and we'll jump on over to the uh, finishing up the, the highlight then okie doke so we have now got a red base coat red ink applied and red mid-tone so we are full on the way to completing the red trousers the epaulets and the cappy this guy is uh, looking more and more ready for a uh, battle of saint privat or something uh, other hideous french uh, destiny so uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to apply the highlight to uh, some of the very very defined points like uh, I'll show you what I'm thinking. I'm thinking uh, the edge of the kepi. I'm thinking uh, here the edge of the epaulets, maybe even the very tip points here of the fringes and some of the points on the trousers where the fabric really sticks out um, just to give that final definition. And um, yeah, I'm uh, just gonna jump straight into it. Right, so uh, this is a really fiery orange red kind of color it really it's really gonna pick up some of the details on the miniature uh, so we, we want to be applying it rather um, conservatively don't uh, just just under some of the you know most crucial details here Um, here, for instance, is a nice example. That little point there sticking out. We got some point here also on the trousers and up here. Again, I'm, I've made sure that the paint is not not that thick. I'll rather revisit areas and add more pigment than end up with a big splotch of paint. That's not really gonna help the overall result so just carefully carefully adding a little bit of this orange detail to the pants um, maybe a little bit here and here so yeah I think that's it's a good way to go and uh, on the epaulets we got these little fringes here. Let's see if I can hit these here or if I've had too much coffee. So I just want to really define each of these fringes by adding a, just highlighting the very, very tip of them. And of course, the edge up here, highlighting that. Again, I'm just thinning out the paint. Yeah, let's let's see if we can get some more detail here. Add it to the fringes. I think that's gonna be good for the overall result something close to that I'm just gonna just need to do the last one here as well so um, I'm gonna finish up the kepi as well 
uh, doing some highlights on the kebby. And I'm gonna move over and uh, finish up the second epaulette. Um, yeah, and I'll uh, catch you guys once that's done. All right, guys, I think it's time for a little uh, status here. We have finished uh, flesh triad. We finished the uh, uh, great coat blue triad, and now we finished the kepi and trousers red triad. So we are, you know, getting along pretty good here with this uh, French line infantryman. Next up, uh, I think, will be to add some uh, of the details to the backpack and the gaiters. And uh, to do that, we actually have a hand-picked triad of uh, deck tan colors. Starting here with a you know, pretty straightforward grayish tan. We go to a, a, a mid-tone and then a highlight of uh, a white color. So this will uh, create the three steps we need to um, build a linen fabric uh, feeling on uh, the rolled up tent and on the gaiters. For the bread pouch we have a more creamy uh, triad uh, because that fabric was a little bit different uh, but the gaiters and uh, the tent was uh, a very bright almost white looking uh, fabric uh, when I saw the replicas made and um, the Les Invalides Army Museum in Paris. So uh, I've actually picked this uh, this color triad based on uh, the uniforms uh, exhibited at the, the museum in Paris. Um, yeah, let's jump into it. Uh, I'm gonna start out by uh, applying the, the deck uh, tan gray here. Uh, I'm just gonna give it a, a liberal coat on the, the gaiters, trying not to coat the, the buttons. So let's see if I can show you guys yeah you got some you got a little series of buttons here going uh, in a uh, vertical uh, line I'm, I'm not going to cover those i'm going to see if i can avoid that uh, they're over here as well yeah so those i'm going to paint around uh, otherwise i'm just uh, gonna cover the whole area of the the tent and the gators and i'll catch you guys once that's done all right so um We've now added uh, the first uh, base layer of uh, the, the triad. We've added some uh, gray tan here on the gaiters and on the rolled up tent on the backpack. Now I've added two layers of paint since we're again we're working on a, a black undercoat, um, but it will help us define uh, for instance buttons here later on will get a lot of uh, free uh, contrast by having the black undercoat so I think it's uh, it's worth it to work in, in this fashion but um, uh, next step now is uh, to um, go with the the mid tone now you could do that or you could do a, uh, a small um, twist which I'm gonna do today I'm going to take the ink called the uh, sepia from uh, our ink triad and I'm going to add that. I mean, it's just going to give you a little weathered down, dirty down feeling on uh, some of the details here on the gators. <clears throat> this is uh, uh, a nice to have detail, not a need to have detail. I think it's not going to be, it's not going to pop out as one of the major things you're going to see when you have uh, 200 miniatures uh, on the gaming table. But um, for uh, any of uh, you guys who are painting aficionados, this is something you could add. I'm gonna add it uh, around the, the buttons and just around the, some of the leather straps just to create a, a little bit of definition uh, in the fabric. So I'm gonna do that and then we're gonna jump over to the mid-tone and uh, pick up some of the details in the fabric. All right, guys, so we are now moving into the mid-tone on the gators and on um, the rolled up tent for the backpack. I'm just uh, carefully with a small brush here, a fine brush, going into the details on the gators. I've picked out the, the little buttons here, as you can see that. And I'm gonna move over now to uh, second gear and I'm gonna finish up the tent as well just to create the um, 
uh, there was nice contrast on um, on the uh, creases and uh, folds in the fabric. Um, the final touch after the mid-tone will be to go to the, the white color and pick out uh, some of the really sharp details like the buttons and uh, maybe some of the edges on the gauges. But uh, generally speaking, you should pick out um, all the details with the mid-tone and just leave a very few uh, of the sharpest details to the highlight there. But uh, I'm going to finish up the, the mid-tone now and um, we will uh, finish up doing the, the white highlight after that. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm just finishing up um, the buttons here and uh, using the mid-tone. Uh, but I just wanted to show you a close-up here um, of how the sepia wash comes into play and creates a nice uh, dirty up uh, finish. <clears throat> I think that is uh, what you would have seen for a French uh, infantryman <coughs> in the field in campaign marching up and down dusty country roads fighting in fields etc etc these white gators would be dirty down pretty fast so I like to add that little detail there with the sepia and it kind of uh, you know helps also to to pick up the details on the buttons I think so um, yeah <clears throat> These are now ready. I'm going to finish up the uh, rolled up tint and we'll move on to uh, highlighting um, highlighting the gators and uh, the backpack. Right, so we're moving on to the last step uh, of the gators and backpack, which is uh, the highlight using a uh, clear white, uh, which is part of the gators and backpack triad uh, available on the web shop. So, um, one of the things I think is, is really tricky about highlighting is uh, knowing when to stop because too much highlighting can really make the, the color uh, explode and kind of offset the whole balance on the miniature. So it's, it's, it's always a, a balance, I think, of finding the right amount or let's say the right area to apply highlights to. I'm not gonna, with the white, which is a really, you know, bright and clear color I'm just gonna go with the absolute minimum here just you know really not picking out that many details just a few edges and places where the Sun would have picked up the fabric and given it a little extra uh, brightness and I'm gonna do of course the buttons here on the gators again to really make those pop that's really important so you can see those as a, a detail I think which is worth uh, uh, emphasizing um, and on the backpack I'm gonna constrain myself to doing the, the edges up there uh, where it's folded around the, the edges of the backpack and then we'll go, we're gonna trace the, the edge of the gators around here uh, where it would have picked up some sunlight from above and course the buttons over here as well that's gonna finish up uh, gators and backpack and we're gonna move on to um, the backpack itself I guess yeah now for the backpack um, we're gonna do a color triad um, which is kind of a leathery triad actually <clears throat> My favorite to use there is uh, from um, Foundry. They got a really good one, so I'm going to show you that. Um, <clears throat> it's called Chestnut, and I'm going to be using that today. So this is not something uh, I have in uh, in my web store, but you can find this on Foundry's uh, uh, web shop. They got a lot of uh, nice triads as well. So I'm going to be using this. Uh, they got an a, a, B, and C, really straightforward system. I'm gonna be using that on the the backpack in here, and uh, while uh, doing the the uh, after doing the, the 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 base coat, I'm gonna add some um, some brown ink, 
to uh, deepen the color and then I'm gonna add the midtone and just a little bit of highlight. Now I'll catch you guys once I've done that. All right, so uh, backpack is done, ink is drying up and um, I think we're gonna move on now to the bread pouch. For the bread pouch uh, of the French line infantry and really all the other bread pouches of uh, the Franco-Prussian war range that we have, we also have a triad um, which will give you that kind of rough linen fabric uh, color that was used, uh, starting out with a, a deep uh, creamy beige color, uh, a mid-tone of uh, a, a cream color and then a light almost uh, uh, kind of in between white and cream here so uh, taking you from a uh, base color to mid-tone and to highlight again um, so we'll be starting out with um, the uh, base color and I'm going to apply that and uh, catch up with you guys when that is done yeah, so I'm uh, just uh, painting in the, the bread pouch here I just wanted to mention that um, Again, this, uh, this color is uh, one of the colors that benefits from uh, two uh, base coats. And uh, I think I'm gonna use the sepia wash once again here to uh, just to pick up the, the button and also to uh, create some, uh, a little bit of, of dirty shade here below uh, where the bread patch uh, uh, top has been uh, folded down so I'm gonna do that and let that dry and uh, catch up with you then all right so um, <clears throat> base coat done uh, a little bit of sepia wash added to just pick up the button and uh, the the shade here or the the shadow in uh, the where the, the 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 bread pouch or haversack as it might be called also have been closed and we're gonna move on now to the uh, mid-tone uh, just um, picking up uh, all the very uh, large areas and just leaving um, a little bit of uh, uh, space uh, to to uh, keep uh, the, the sepia wash uh, still defining the button. So I'll be doing that now and um, yeah, move on into the highlight uh, afterwards. Uh, the highlight uh, will be applied mainly along the edge here to define uh, the opening of the bread pouch and uh, just a little bit down here in the corners. It's not going to uh, be a whole lot there. Uh, mainly what the highlight color is going to be used for is the, the shoulder strap or uh, the strap rather that uh, kind of follows all over the torso to really pick that up as a, a bright detail. So. I'll be adding these two now and I'll catch up with you when that is done. So now we've finished up the, the bread pouch uh, using the bread pouch triad. Uh, last color we did was uh, this really um, light, almost white beige color, uh, picking up the edges of the bread pouch uh, here and here and also uh, just uh, tracing uh, the strap all the way around the torso making sure that detail really pops out it's going to be a nice detail contrast to the reds and the, the blues of the uniform um, <clears throat> right so um, I think we're ready to move on to some of the the tinware uh, so we're going to just use a standard metal triad um, I have my own uh, version <laughs> picked out here um, I like to work with the um, uh, Citadel uh, in this instance, so I'm gonna use a, uh, a <clears throat> base color of uh, Iron Warrior onto a uh, mid-tone of Iron Hand Steel and then uh, just highlighting with uh, Rune Fang Steel. Um, I always uh, put some black ink on my uh, base coat uh, when, when it comes to metal, so uh, I'll uh, do that today also and uh, I'll just uh, pick you up along the steps and show you uh, how it looks as we go forward. But uh, these are the, the, the basics of uh, how I'm going to, to paint the metalware. So uh, uh, it'll be <coughs> uh, this little pot up here, this big frying pan or whatever that is, and uh, the pipe of the rifle along with uh, the bayonet uh, holster, which is also um, metal actually. 
uh, and there's a little coffee cup here so you can get his cafe au lait <coughs> I can't find the Germans without that one so that's also going to be picked up uh, during this phase so I'm going to apply some uh, some metal now uh, and uh, some base color and some uh, ink and then I'm gonna uh, catch up with you there all right so um, <coughs> base coat of uh, metal has been done and uh, I've applied some black ink things are really shaping up now I think moving forward and uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna paint the the rifle so the the, the wood um, of the rifle and also uh, some of um, uh, the bits and parts of uh, the tent kit that is carried the, the tin poles I'm gonna paint in a little more bright uh, color to make those pop out a little bit but some of the uh, other stuff here uh, <clears throat> used to uh, assembling the, the tent I'm gonna keep in the same uh, wood tone as the rifle so um, for that I'm going to use a um, chocolate brown uh, from Green Stuff World I'm gonna ink that down afterwards uh, and I'm gonna highlight it with a uh, redwood brown from uh, Green Stuff World. So those two colors are gonna be used for the wood parts and uh, I am going to use um, the Andalusian Earth ink that's part of our uh, ink set available on the web shop uh, to uh, darken down the chocolate brown. So uh, that's gonna be the next step now while we wait for the the metal ink to really dry up and uh, we can move on to to highlighting the metal parts just want to emphasize also that when painting the tent poles I'll give you some black background so you can really see that I uh, uh, added a little metal tip here to uh, the tent pole and uh, this would be the the <coughs> enforced uh, uh, part of the the tent pole that is uh, uh, stuck into the ground so it has a little uh, metal enforced end there right so um, moving on now with the wood parts and I'm gonna apply the base coat and uh, the ink and I'm gonna catch up with you then we've now been over the rifle and some of the wood parts for um, erecting the tent uh, the tent poles himself I'm gonna paint in a a lighter color uh, actually a triad called uh, spear shaft from um, from foundry I'm gonna use that and um, <clears throat> uh, I think uh, that's gonna uh, create a good contrast and really pick up the the, the tent poles in the backpack um, right so uh, next step now is to uh, highlight the the rifle and uh, those wood parts and for that we're going to use the uh, redwood brown uh, which gives a nice uh, uh, glow to the um, to the wood color and uh, going to use that um, straight out of the bottle here for the the rifle and for those uh, wood parts of the tent uh, so I'm going to do that and uh, I'm going to also um, apply the mid-tone of the metal uh, to the metalware and I'll catch up with you guys once that is done so metalware is finished uh, I've added all three uh, both uh, base color ink mid-tone and highlight so uh, yeah picking up some of the details there on the tin pans and also the little uh, coffee cup and the barrel of the rifle so uh, I think it's time now to uh, paint the uh, tent poles uh, right here. Uh, we got two of them sticking up and uh, for that we're going to use a spear shaft color triad from uh, from Foundry. Again also the Foundry system is, is uh, built up really intuitively. You have an A, B and C color. Uh, so I'm going to just uh, apply that, uh, paint up those two tent poles and um, after that I am going to paint up his uh, water bottle and for the water bottle which is uh, it was it was metal but it was covered in a, a light blue um, 
uh, fabric, uh, I'm going to use uh, the two colors from our Bavarian uh, color triad, uh, namely the blue gray dusk and mirage blue as a highlight. So I'll use this one as a base color and this one as a highlight. So I'm going to show you how those look as well. Those are really spot on for the French um, <clears throat> water bottle flask. Um, yeah, so those two uh, steps I'm going to do now, the tent poles and uh, the water bottle. And uh, I will return once those are done. Really moving forward now, really picking up just the last bits and pieces here. Um, water bottle done. Used a uh, blue wash to really deepen the tone and then a highlight with the Mirage Blue from the Bavarian uh, painting set. Uh, all the woodware is done, the tinware is done. What's left to do now is to pick up some of the brass details like uh, the belt buckle, uh, uh, the buttons and uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, after that we'll be uh, tracing um, all the black leather with a, just a, a, a light gray. So those are the next uh, few steps we're going to do now and I'll catch up with you uh, once we're doing the leather wear. What we're going to do now is uh, we're going to retrace all the small leather straps with uh, black just to make sure everything is covered. And uh, after that we're going to highlight it with a um, very very uh, dark grey, um, something, uh, something close to um, charcoal black. Uh, super dark gray which is going to give us uh, just a, a, a slight highlight of uh, the black leather wear so that it, it it becomes a little more defined than it is right now um, yeah so that is uh, the next step um, and uh, I'll catch you guys once that is done all right so uh, tracing all the, the black leather wear with a um, the dark gray I think we can put that under nice to have and not need to have but I think it adds a, a, a certain amount of detail I'm also going to trace the edges of the kebi and um, yeah I mean I'll give you an example here's a, here's a good example we got this little uh, ammo pouch here so I'm just going to trace the edges of the pouch like this to help some of those details pop out and I'm going to do the same here on the back where we got another just helping those details to pop we also have um, some pretty black shoes here so I'm gonna just highlight front of the shoes also on the list of things nice to have and not need to have I guess is uh, adding some uh, dust pigment to the boots um, I do that because I think it adds a certain level of realistic uh, feeling so you can do that but we'll, we'll come back to that later on um, so I'm not too worried about whether this looks uh, very highlighted right now because they're going to be dusted down later on these uh, these boots. Um, yeah, so basically just picking up details also like the chin strap here on the cappy. Going in with a fine brush. Picking up little details like that. And here on the front, got a few. And on the backpack. So I'm going to finish up these and then we're going to move on to the um, officer insignia that he's got his edge on he's got on his sleeves 
and uh, we're going to do those in a fiery red uh, with an orange highlight and then I think we are very very close to uh, something that is uh, finished we'll do the beard also um, with a slight highlight of um, of dark brown I think so uh, those are some of the last bits and pieces uh, I think he's come together really nicely uh, and I think we've hit the spot with those French uh, signal colors like the blue and the red and the white, the tricolor colors. Um, and I think it, it, I think it's really nice how the water bottle uh, pops out with this uh, light blue. I mean, I've seen both uh, when looking at the French uniforms of the, the Army Museum in Paris. Uh, the, 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 the water bottle itself is made of metal, but it in, in many cases it, is, it, ha it has this light blue um, uh, cover uh, in, in uh, some kind of fabric that is um, I think it's a felt maybe that uh, protects it so I've, I've gone with the light blue here because I think it really helps uh, to uh, create a nice detail against the uh, uh, other darker colors so um, I'm gonna finish up the gray and I'm gonna add the echelons and I'm gonna come back to you guys then I think we are nearing the end here I've added the the echelons, the fiery uh, orange I used again and um, highlighted the beard using the dark brown we used as a base coat for the rifle and woodwork and uh, I've added the small blue, uh, the little blue piping on the kebi which is uh, significant for uh, for the French uh, kebi, I just did that using the uh, dark blue, uh, the base coat blue for the French um, gray coat and I think that took us to the end um, yeah it's uh, it's been a long haul but I hope that you guys found it uh, useful uh, I did it pretty much step by step so you should be able to trace back any uh, particular spots or uh, uh, details in the uniform that you find uh, you need some information on the last thing I'm gonna show you today is, uh, uh, I guess we, we all, you know, painting and so on, we all had our preferences when it comes to using varnishes. And I love matte varnish. Um, I've used a, a long uh, f a list of different varieties of varnishes and I've really been looking and scouting the market for a matte varnish, which is really matte. I mean, really dry mat and I found it so um, I want to share that with you because it's it's really it's quite something actually um, <clears throat> so if you see the miniature now it has a, a you know semi not glossy but a satin uh, kind of finished which is natural for for acrylics um, but the matte ultra max matte uh, varnish that uh, green stuff world offers which you can also pick up on uh, my web shop it's really it's really out of this world it's, this is something quite special so i'm, I'm gonna uh, apply that live as uh, and let it dry up <clears throat> see if i can catch uh, if i can catch the process of drying on um, on screen on camera because it really takes the 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 glossiness away so I'm um, just gonna pick up my brush here for see if I can get some good light in yeah so we got some matte varnish here I'm gonna apply it on, on one of the legs and leave the other one without so you can really see the difference And it's one of these varnishes where you don't have to worry about white uh, bubbles or recesses or anything like that. Yeah, so you can already see how that leg that I applied the varnish on is significantly more matte than 
the other one. I think you can see how this leg is still a little bit glossy and how the other one is just ultra matte. Um, I've used this varnish now for about a month and I mean I am I'm not gonna change back to anything else this is this gives me the finish that I really like I really like that ultra matte finish on the miniatures and I I think it's um, it's a nice finish also when you are uh, if you're photographing your miniatures it really is the best option um, uh, in my opinion so uh, I'm gonna give this brave French chap his final coat of varnish and then I'm gonna dust up his boots a little bit using uh, European Earth pigment from AK Interactive and I'm gonna end up this video by posting a picture uh, or a few pictures perhaps of this uh, miniature in uh, in a light box so all the details and colors really pop out so you can see them and uh, I want to thank you for uh, for watching this rather long tutorial to the end uh, and uh, thanks for your interest and uh, continued support in uh, Eagles of Empire uh, I just hope that you guys found this informative and you found this uh, um, inspiring and I'm uh, hoping that you guys will uh, Keep on gaming and uh, keep on enjoying your hobby out there. Take care and be well. And uh, I'll see you in the next episode where we're going to paint some Bavarian infantry. Have a good one. Bye-bye.